Hi everyone, Dr. Carolyn Coco Ross here. And today we're gonna to be talking about why being a good girl is not all it's cracked up to be. I don't know how many of you out there identify as good girls, but uh, maybe some of you do. And, and we're gonna talk about those of you who don't identify as good girls too. So I don't know how you guys are doing, but it's, we're, it's coming into fall. Thank goodness the weather is cooling down. Um, we've been in and out of quarantine now for, oh, seems like forever. Seems like it's been most of 2020. I cannot wait to see the tail end of 2020. And I oh, just, I'm afraid to even have hopes that 2021 will be better. But let's talk about what we're here to talk about. I'm, I'm talking today about what's called archetypes. So an archetype is kind of like a role that we play in life. And there are many archetypes that, you know, portray the roles that women play in particular. Uh, so here's the, the official definition of archetype is a very typical example of a certain person or thing. So one archetype that's pretty common is the archetype of mother. So it could be uh, many other archetypes, but many of us have been socialized to be good little girls. And what does that really mean? And why, do you, why should you even care? Uh, and what does it have to do with binge eating, compulsive reading or food addiction? Well, the archetype of being a good girl means a few things. It often means that at the most basic level, you are not able or not allowed to be authentic, not able to express yourself, especially to express your emotions authentically. In particular, good girls are not allowed to express anger, for example. Now, actress uh, Tracy Ellis says, a woman's fury holds lifetimes of wisdom. So a woman's fury holds lifetimes of wisdom. Even using the word fury or God forbid rage uh, can make a good girl feel a little bit uncomfortable. And I'm one of those ones who was raised to be a good girl, to be nice. So, but many women now are feeling rage or fury for a whole variety of reasons, you know, you're stuck at home homeschooling while trying to do your job full time. That's a reason to be angry and rageful, not towards anybody in particular, but just towards the situation that we're all in. Um, I know for me, it's been uh, very isolating during the quarantine. You know, when I, when I go and put laundry in, the only thing I see really are clothes that I should not ever be wearing outside of my house. Um, you know, a lot of sweats, people, a lot of sweats. But often we use these roles that we play, these archetypes that we play as a way to deal with our emotions. And they can actually cover up our personal truths. Now I've talked in, in the past um, videos about how important it is to be aware of your emotions and to recognize that your emotions can be the driving force be behind your overeating, binge eating, uh, obsession with food, et cetera. So I hope you've seen some of those uh, previous videos that will uh, give you the context for this conversation. But now it's more important than ever to bring context to the roles or archetypes that define women's body identity and most especially the ones that tend to define women who are living in larger bodies. So see if you can use your body wisdom, in other words, keep breathing, stay in your body to determine the truth that's underlying the roles that you play. Now in this video, I'm just gonna give you a few of the archetypes that sometimes women play. Uh, if you're not uh, listening to my podcast, you might wanna check out a longer uh, list of those archetypes. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a guided process to help you kind of reconnect with your own personal truth. So here are some examples of what I mean. See if you can, you know, see if you can find an archetype that you identify with um, besides the good girl archetype. 
uh, which we're going to talk about. So the first one is the good girl archetype. That's your people pleaser. You try to avoid conflict at all cost, and you want other people to like you. Now, sometimes, you know, you may think of a people pleaser as someone who's uh, you know, meek or shy. Obviously, I'm not like that. But deep inside, I'm easily wounded by people's um, comments about me or what I think they may feel about me, etc. Now, the truth that may be underlying that archetype of the good girl is uh, when I'm saying yes, even when I want to say no, um, the question is, what do I really want or need? So the truth would be in identifying what you really want or need and the fact that you're not saying what you really want or need. So that's that's the good girls. I hope there's, I got some more sisters out there. Uh, number two, sexy mama architect, ar archetype. You may be proud of your curves. You sh love showing them off. You uh, may wear body um body fitting or tight fitting clothing, but sometimes your sexiness can be misunderstood. So the, to get at your underlying truth, here's the question. When I'm acting sexy, even maybe in situations where it's not appropriate, what do I really want and need? So that's for sexy mama. Number three, the radical archetype. You may want to flip off anyone who calls you fat or you, who you feel is stigmatizing you because of your size. Being angry is your way of coping with fat shaming. And you may see yourself as a fierce, fierce fat activist. So the truth for you is if my anger could talk, what would it say? So that's how you get to the truth of that one. So there are many, many other roles that, um, you know, I've actually detailed all of this in my book, The Emotional Eating Workbook. So if you're interested in finding more about that, feel free. I'd love to encourage you to purchase my Emotional Eating Workbook. But uh, to go on with this, we all play many, many different roles in our lives and express all sorts of different archetypes. So there are many other possible archetypes. And these roles may be things that were thrust upon us by our parents, or they may be things that were chosen by us, but unconsciously or adopted even with full awareness. For example, you may have been thrust into the role of a caretaker archetype by having to caretake your parents when you were younger. Maybe your parents were ill or you had a parent with mental illness or a substance use problem. Then that puts you in the role of the parent in, in a caretaking role. And then maybe in later life, you go on to have a career as a nurse or a doctor or a physician assistant because that's a comfortable role for you. You've, you know, you've already been in that caretaker role. So uh, some people might call that the do-gooder archetype, or you could call it the caretaking archetype. Now, there is no right or wrong anything about archetypes or roles that we have in our lives. The only issue is what they're covering up or what they may be covering up. So it's really also important to be aware of how these roles we play uh, can impact um, our food and body image issues. So they may have unconsciously shaped our choices. And then to remember who you really are, what your truth is beneath that archetype role. So more and more women of all sizes, ages, shapes, and ethnic origins are being called to express our truths. It's really time for women, you know, across the world to stand up. We're seeing, you know, women as young, young women, um, such as, um, what's her, I don't remember her last name, but Greta, the, the young uh, teenager who's a, a climate change activist. So we're seeing people in uh, young, young women in protest march, marches in all sorts of areas of life who are speaking their truth. And you got to admire these younger women, but it's time for us old women to stand up and speak our truth as well. 
Speaking of which, what about Jane Fonda and her activism most recently? And she's over the age of 80. So it's never too late to speak your truth. So if, if this is something that resonates with you, um, you know, feel free to talk to me about uh, your, set up a consult to talk to me about your individual food and body image issues. But right now I'd like to move to a, uh, a little meditation that I think will help you recapture the dreams that you may have lost or thrown away because of limits that you or other people have placed on you because of your body size. So just get yourself in a comfortable position, take a couple of deep breaths, make sure that you're either sitting on the floor or that, you're, or that your feet are flat on the floor. If you feel comfortable, gently close your eyes. And before we begin, let's take three deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you move that breath in through your nose, just imagine the sensation of that breath moving through every cell in your body, from the top of your scalp all the way to the soles of your feet. And as you exhale, just imagine all of the tension or tightness of the day moving out through your out breath. Imagine your body floating through air like a balloon free and clear to move about wherever it wants to go. Maybe it's floating on a cloud or just floating into space. Experience the sensation of your body being free, not constrained by gravity or by the gravity of others' expectations or your own expectations. With that feeling and staying in connection with your body sensation, Think about the dreams that you want to remember and bring back into your life. Maybe they're dreams from childhood even, or maybe they're just a dream from before this god awful pandemic or all of the stuff that we're going through in our country. What are the needs from your role that you can identify with that you want to find new ways to satisfy in your life? So maybe there's a need for you to speak your truth. That's something that you've never done before. And you can find a new way to do that through writing or through speaking out or through the work that you do. So think about what the needs are from the roles that you are playing. And just imagine how you can Find new ways to satisfy those in your life. Now continue imagine you're imagining yourself floating on a cloud. You feel your body as weightless, as relaxed, and as calm. Scan through your life and identify any other roles that aren't working well for you. Maybe it's something that worked well when you were younger, but it doesn't work well now. So think of those roles. Maybe it's a role as a wife, a partner. Um, maybe it's your career role. And then again, see if you can identify as you stay in touch with your body sensation, identify dreams about that role that you want to remember and bring back into your life. Maybe it's something simple. Maybe it's something that's more complicated, but in this relaxed state, your body offers you all the wisdom you need in order to recapture your dreams and to uncover your truth. So again, what is the truth that's underlying that role? And what, how would you find new ways to satisfy that in your life? Continue to be aware of your breathing. Continue to feel your body floating on the cloud or floating in space, being absolutely weightless. You are carefree. Your body is relaxed and comfortable and at peace. 
Take another couple of deep breaths. And if you have one other role that you want to address and identify the truth or the dreams associated with that role, then think about that now. And see if you can recapture that truth for yourself. Recapture those lost dreams that maybe got lost because of your expectations or expectations put on you by other people. And when you're finished, again, bring yourself back to the sensation of your body floating on a cloud. Your body feels completely relaxed as if it's just sinking gently into that puffy cloud. All of the tension in your neck has gone away. Your lower back is gently cradled by the cloud. You breathe in the cleanest air that's possible. Your body is tingling with the energy of your breath moving through every cell in your system. Now take another deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And then slowly bring yourself back to the room where you're sitting or, or laying down and gently open your eyes when you're ready. So I hope that's been helpful for you. I um, will, Next week we'll be talking about what's called uh, radical acceptance. And I think this is an important topic because there's so much going on in most of our lives that brings up this opportunity for radical acceptance. Like how do we accept the fact that maybe things are happening around us that we aren't happy about? How do we accept the financial stresses that many of us are experiencing? How do we accept changes in relationships or conflict in relationships? So we're gonna talk all about that on the next video. Be sure and su subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get a notification of any upcoming videos. Make comments and I would love to interact with you there. And I look forward to seeing you next time.